feeling poorly, or actually disease or illness, are one of the most important drivers in history. <coughs> no, it's, it's okay. I'm fine. I'll live. Now, there are some historians, like myself, who like nothing more than a battle, or some scheming, or a bloody execution. But then there are historians who turn around and say, as exotic and as exciting as that stuff may be, actually, social history, the study of things like agriculture and laws that change and affect everybody in the society are far more important, and they're right. But you know what? There's a third area of history that doesn't always get the same love and respect it deserves. And that's understanding how disease and illness has fundamentally changed the world around us, and indeed the societies throughout the world. Take, for example, the massive global European empires of the early modern and industrial era. The reason why France and Britain found it difficult to conquer Africa had nothing to do with local tribes when it came to technology that the Europeans had a completely unfair advantage. What changed was the local diseases, which killed far more troops than any of the locals would have done. Indeed, the study of military history should go hand in hand with the study of medical history, because certainly up until the era of modern day medicine, Far more troops died of infections and simple illnesses and poor hygiene than they did from guns or swords or cannons. So therefore, this is a chance to look at the importance of these tiny little microscopic things that can change the whole of human history. It is thought by some archaeologists that one of the first illnesses we had was linked to when we started to domesticate animals, and that was tuberculosis. So you can see how closely external factors and events link to our health. But apart from those ongoing background illnesses that were killing us, there were of course huge apocalyptic moments of explosions of disease, the most famous probably being the Black Death of the 14th century, where between a third and a half of Europe's population was wiped out, fundamentally changing history and society. Of course, perhaps the most famous example of biological warfare and disease changing things were the conquistadors. They famously picked up a mild version of syphilis in the New World and turned it into something far more deadly in Europe. But it was the European diseases that they inadvertently brought with them to the New World, where the locals had no resistance to, that wiped out swathes of populations of two huge empires. So people like Pizarro, with small amounts of troops, could suddenly bring down something like the Inca Empire. But whereas Pizarro and the conquistadors are well associated with disease, there are other situations which are less so. It's fair to say that there's plenty of coverage about World War I at the moment, and indeed 10 million people died in that war. But what happened right at the end of that war, and for the following winter, was something called Spanish flu. It wasn't actually Spanish, but it was influenza, a particularly virulent amount, and 100 million people around the world died in the space of a year, many of them actually young and strong. It'll be interesting to see if that event gets as much coverage as World War I. However, today, we are still not immune from illnesses. Something like this, SARS, travelled round the world and killed hundreds. But if you want to meet mankind's most deadly enemy, it's not the Black Death or bullets or gas or even famine, it's malaria. Malaria has killed more human beings than anything else in history and is still doing so. In the 18th century a British scientist called Edward Jenner realised that people who had been infected by the mild cowpox seemed never to catch the extremely deadly smallpox. And he invented inoculation, using one mild version of a disease to stop you getting the really bad one. And really, from him, you get the start of modern medicine. Humanities fight back against all these microbes and viruses penicillin, antibiotics, improved sanitation and general health care mean that there are many common killers that aren't a big problem today. But let us not underestimate the virus and the bacteria.
you get illnesses such as AIDS that are still fundamentally incurable. We can mitigate, but we can't stop yet. And when you look at how susceptible a slow-moving organisation and groups of medieval Europe spread the Black Death so broadly with modern-day airplanes and cars and trains, outbreaks of things like SARS and pig flu show you that potentially these massive urban populations could once again fall to some horrible, terrible disease and millions will die. But I don't want you to panic. Make sure to wash your hands regularly, cover your mouth when you sneeze, and everything should basically be okay. Thank you for watching. Well, if you like that, there's always more. At History Gems regularly posts on Twitter and on Facebook, where there are longer articles, and also on YouTube as well. But if you really want more, there's The Busy Person's Guide to British History, available on Amazon now.